Welcome back to the weekly show here at Pink Bike. The Sea Otter Classic kicks off today, and we've got some exciting racing recaps to cover with Sarah Moore. And Matt Beer is going to join us for a best of the buy and sell segment. And also, of course, we're going to let you know about the latest Pink Bike podcast episode. So let's get started. I am stoked to have Sarah Moore, the leading lady at Pink Bike. Just going to call her that so I don't get the heat. <laughs> Now, Sarah, today is day one of the Sea Otter Classic, super exciting stuff. And as someone who's ventured down to California a couple times for this event, what is the Sea Otter Classic to you? I think the Sea Otter Classic is one of the best trade shows because, first of all, it's outdoors. It's not in a, you know, inside with our air conditioning and artificial lighting. And so it's a lot nicer environment. And then it's just kind of that place where consumers get together with media and the bike industry, there's racing, and it's just like everything all comes together. One, it's usually early season, so yeah, it's a super fun trade show. It can be a little hectic on your part, for sure, in the past, running around, getting photos, creating articles, like it's it's pretty run and gun down there. Yeah, yeah, the hard part is, you know, you're out there in the sun all day, you get, you know, sunburned and dehydrated, and then you have to go home and put together all these articles, so yeah, the first year I definitely maybe wore myself a little thin, but then you get a little smarter and, you know, go to the media center for some snacks. Snacks. And- do some work during the day instead of just running around the trade show all day. Totally. Well, even though today is day one and this is the weekly show, there's already articles going live. Mike and Dario have been at it with the tech stuff. So keep your eyes peeled on the homepage. There's a lot of new tires that have come out recently. We've got Hutchinson, Vittoria, Maxis, and some budget suspension. And in the next couple of days, there will be even more. Christina, you're down there this year. What are you most excited to see? I'm excited to see loads of friends, of course. It's always one of those places where you can get a lot of people in one space, whether they're the athletes there to race or the industry folks coming to push their latest products. That's kind of my most exciting part about Sea Otter and just good weather, actually, like leaving, you know, the Pacific Northwest up here, getting some good sunshine. Pretty stoked on that. And this Sea Otter will be a little bit interesting. I mean, we've got um, a lot of the downhill riders are prepping for the World Cup season, so we might see a few of them out with their new products and bikes and teams, perhaps. Always excited to see those team changes. And also the cross country. So this weekend with Sea Otter, the cross country athletes will be down in Brazil, the World Cup athletes anyway. And so we won't have those usual kind of big names, big fights at the Sea Otter Classic. But regardless, I'm excited to see all of the racing and just a little shameless plug for a video that I released yesterday on Pink Bike. It was why you should give a darn about this bike festival and bike events like it. So make sure to check it out. I will link to it below in case you missed it. Give a darn. (laughs) Why you should give a darn. Definitely keep your eyes peeled all weekend. There's going to be loads of tech articles and videos coming out from Henry, Dario, Mike Casimir's down there, and myself. And if you want to check out some of the Curly Bar side of the world articles, make sure to head over to Velo as well. Now, this past weekend, we went officially back to World Cup racing. The cross-country athletes were down in Maripora, Brazil, and it was a super exciting weekend. There's a lot on the line, and it's an Olympic year. So, Sarah, run us through some of the more exciting race antics we saw out there. Yeah, so things kicked off with the short track, which was actually on Saturday, not on Friday like it has been last year at the other World Cup. So, Racers went back to back with the short track, the 20 minute race, and then the cross country Olympic race, which was an hour 20, an hour and a half for the men and the women. So gnarly. Um, Yeah, so gnarly to go back to back, especially in the heat. It was like 30 degrees. uh, So a lot of the riders were warming up with like their ice vests. And so, yeah, definitely the heat played a huge factor at this race. I saw the ice vests, especially in the start gate. And even when the finishers came across the line, it was like straight to the hydration station. And I got to say, like the dust, like this is a different weekend obviously racing back to back from the short track to the XCO Mm -hmm. and just breathing in all that dust like it looked gnarly I think some of the athletes you were saying earlier outside of the camera um, some of the athletes that came early to the events maybe placed a little bit well or Mm -hmm. a little bit better overall because they got used to the heat the humidity it was pretty gnarly so how did that shape up into the big race yeah so if we look at the short track it was Evie Richards that won and Sam Gaze so both have you know won short tracks before Gaze is the world champion in that event and Evie has some definitely like she was a favorite coming into that race they were both in the top 10 in the XCO but you know maybe because that race was the day before or just you know because the heat 
um, they weren't as acclimatized for the longer event. It's more important, obviously, um, to be heat acclimatized. And so in the women's race, we saw the top three riders, um, which were the top, the, the winner of the race uh, was Jenny Risvid. She hadn't won a World Cup since 2019, which so is surprising rad. to me because you always think of her like she's last year. She had lots of podium finishes, yes. but she didn't win a race since 2019. So it was awesome to see her on the top of the podium. And then uh, Sevilla Blanc, an American, came second. Yes. Uh, Lots of Americans yeah. heating and up that Haley top Batten ten. Yeah, and Haley Batten came third. And yeah, Kelsey Urban was another American, yes. I think, in sixth. And then in tenth, um, Kate, Kate Courtney. Courtney. Yeah, so four American women in the top ten. That was a huge story of the yeah. race. Like, USA is not really known as a like a powerhouse four in the top 10 is like, that's like Switzerland or France. For you know? sure. Like, and then Christopher <laughs> Blevins winning the men's XCO race yeah. as well. Like yeah. that was absolutely like huge. Like he was, you know, top 12, 15. Like he started from maybe 30th. Like he didn't have that great of a short track race. And so, yeah, moving up through the field and winning the field, that was probably the biggest surprise for me of, yeah. of the weekend. I think so. That was his second ever World Cup XCO mm -hmm. win. So and the other one was in Snowshoe, huge. which like you can be like, oh, maybe it was that, you know, home crowd. And sometimes not all the racers go to the U.S. rounds. Yeah. Um, it was, I think, the season finale. It was the end of the season. So that yeah, was to exciting. the season opener in Brazil, second World Cup win, like that was huge. You got to be feeling pretty good, pretty fired up. And I like speaking of all the women that from the USA, especially that did well. Um, we were talking earlier, and there's only two riders that can make it onto the Olympic team. So mm -hmm. to have that many, I mean, usually it's France and Switzerland and other nations contending for those top spots on the Olympic team. This year, I mean, it's just two. So it's a big, big fight. Because in previous years, each nation was allowed the top ranked nations could send three riders mm -hmm. and now the top ranked nations can only send two and so for a country like the USA they've qualified two riders but when there's four riders in the top 10 and if we look at the last Olympics the top three women were all from the same nation yes and so won't see that again yeah we won't see that again mm -hmm. um yeah and so that was yeah just a, a little bit different it's very hotly contested uh Olympic births this year but some of the athletes Sorry. that have already qualified um Puck, Ginny Peterson Puck Peters was not there. Um, Mona Mitterwallner was also not there. And uh, Pauline Fran Prevo was also not there. So three athletes that had already qualified decided not to go to this race. So we don't mm -hmm. have an idea of their their form. Yes, they're out racing bigger, crazier, gnarlier <laughs> events as well as who else did we not see? Tom Pidcock. We didn't see Matthew Vanderpool. So there's a yeah, couple they're of they're out winning the spring heavy. classics races. So they've obviously got the form. So we'll see come Olympics. Um, and then we didn't talk about the second place in the men's was um, Victor Koretsky. So strong uh, French rider ahead of the Paris Olympics. Definitely like you could see the French men, like they're going to be really fighting for those top two spots. Super exciting racing. Make sure to check out the highlights and the action that went down so you can be up to speed because already we are back to cross country racing this weekend again in Brazil. And Sarah did an awesome article recently which showed various ways that you can watch the cross country and downhill World Cup racing this season. So I will link to that article below should you need it. Well, thank you so much to Sarah Moore for joining for the first half of the show today. Next up, let's shoot it straight into the Pink Bike Podcast recap because Sarah Moore got to interview Henry Quinney and get to know a lot more about this guy. It's a really fun one and he lets us know how he really feels. So if you want to hear more from our eccentric, outlandish, outspoken, highly British counterpart, I will put a link to that episode below. Make sure to check it out. And if you don't already, subscribe to the podcast. Next up, we're going to send it into the best of the buy and sell segment. So Matt Beer is going to join us through the portal. Come on in, Matt Beer. We haven't done this segment in a while, and I think it's a good excuse to root around the buy and sell, find some good deals out there, and boy... Did we find some good deals out there? There are two bikes we're going to talk about today under, well, let's say $1,000 and under on the Pink Bike Buy and Sell. And I think they're both pretty good deals. So kick us off, Matt. What have we got here? Yeah, we've got a, a hardtail. It's a 2021 Trek Roscoe. So it's an aluminum frame. It uses 27.5 plus tires to give you a bit more traction and cushion out there on the trails. But it's a steal of a deal at 850 bucks USD. 850 bucks for a brand new bike. It's got the dropper post. It's got pretty much doesn't need any upgrading per se. Um, looks ready to rip out of the box. And even just last week, Henry and I were complaining about how expensive downhill bikes are. And he said that nobody needs downhill bikes. I think we do. 
But this is a good excuse to say, hop on the buy and sell. Find something for cheap that's gently used. I mean, this bike, it says, yeah, it looks you know, brand it's new. perfect for beginners, starting to ride. Got a wide range drivetrain. You've got hydraulic disc brakes from Shimano. It's just going to be a great bike that's going to get you out there, starting on the trails. You're really going to learn how to ride the bike because a hardtail is not going to let you cheat any of those climbs or descents. Have you spent much time on a hardtail in the past? I grew up on a hardtail. Yeah, started out with V brakes and a two inch travel fork. So I learned pretty quickly uh, what was smooth and what wasn't. <laughs> yes. And if people are looking for a gently used bike or even a new bike for a good deal, like what are some of the most important factors that they should check out? I mean, if you're mountain biking and you're riding more undulating or steep terrain, you're definitely going to want a dropper post. Mm -hmm. You're going to want tires, like good tires are going to be the biggest upgrade you can make and at a fairly affordable price in comparison to like a new fork or, you know, a better frame, which is essentially the whole bike. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I would start with those two things for sure. There you go. Yeah, you can get a set of tires for much cheaper than you can buy a brand new dropper post. So Make sure a bike's coming with a drop propose because it is a big upgrade, but then the tires, you can upgrade those later on. Now, another bike that we found, it's closer to a thousand bucks, but I think that's fair. It's a 2022 Giant Stance, medium size, and it's dual suspension. It's got the dropper post. It's got kind of all the bells and whistles. Anything kind of catch your eye about this bike or, you know, maybe, maybe buyers shouldn't check out this bike for some reason that I don't know? I mean, yeah, Giant has the stance. It's their lower entry model uh, into the full suspension category. So, yeah, you're going to get a bit more traction than what you would on a hardtail. And it's still a lightweight aluminum frame. And, yeah, like you said, has all the bells and whistles. So you've got good disc brakes um, for, you know, medium descents and a dropper post, a uh, 1x12 drivetrain, I think, there. And so, yeah, decent gearing, kind of goes anywhere not going to like smash any downhill races on this thing, but it's a really good place to start. The buyer here says um, they rode it at Thunder Mountain. I don't know where that is, but it sounds like a bike park five times. So gently ridden blue and green trails and it's fully, it's getting a full service right now. So it maybe has taken on a couple of bike park laps in its day, but we're kind of going with that cross country theme. Sarah and I were chatting cross country recaps earlier. So these are great bikes. They can get you out on the trails, or maybe if you just want to add something to the quiver, or perhaps you're more interested in downhill racing. You have one of those super fancy, you know, $8,000 downhill bikes. Save your money on the cross country bike. Get one of these. You're going to have a ton of fun. Awesome. Thank you again, Matt, for joining us. And thank you guys for watching the episode this week. If you don't already, please subscribe to our channel. Cool. I hope you enjoyed that episode. Be sure to check out the homepage. We've got lots of new news content, lots of press releases, tech articles, launches coming up from Sea Otter. overwhelming. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> don't miss any of it. Go check the homepage. See ya.